Today we're going to be talking about the difference between monopods and tripods and which one you will need for your photography. Hi there, welcome back. If this is your first time on the channel, I would really appreciate it if you click on the subscribe button, click on the bell notification icon and you'll be notified when I upload new videos on a weekly basis. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and a share, I'd really appreciate it. Now, if you keep watching to the very end, I've got two extra special bonus tips. Now, monopods versus tripods, which do you need and when do you use them? Well, let's look at the different types of tripods first and what they can and cannot do. You don't need a tripod if you're taking photographs on a bright sunny day where you're gonna be shooting at very, very high shutter speeds. Say for example, between 125th of a second and 1 8,000th of a second, because camera shake won't be an issue for you. But where you do need to use a tripod is if you're shooting in low light, say for example, the Northern Lights or night photography, or if you're gonna be doing say landscape photography during the day, and you're gonna be using different types of filters for long exposure. So the first type of tripod I'm gonna show you is this little small uh, type of one here. These will be very, very useful and handy if you want to position your tripod in a location uh, where you can't put a normal conventional tripod. Now, you can clamp them up, they're very, very small. You can basically wrap them around a fence or a gate, branches of a tree. They're very bendable like this here. Uh, you can put more into different uh, positions, twist them around different things. Really, really handy, really, really useful. Now. Personally, I wouldn't use a tripod like this for a big heavy DSLR camera and a heavy lens because I just don't think it would stand up for it. But if you've got a point and shoot camera or say for example a bridge camera, it would be absolutely ideal for the like that. You can also use it as well if you're going to be doing vlogging or doing YouTube videos. Put your camera on top of the tripod, carry it, hold it about, really really handy for the like that. So that's the first little type of tripod, cheap, cheerful and very very useful if you've got the right type of camera for it the second type of tripod that i have is this little small uh, mini tripod um, this is actually collapsed up it's really really small really really compact it's small enough that you can actually put it in an outdoor jacket if you've got fairly big pockets now it's a really good strong metal construction folds out locks into position and you can actually put your camera sitting on top of that there works really really well there the next common type of tripod is this type of a design. It's a cheap one, but it's designed more to hold a lighter type of camera, such as a point and shoot or a bridge camera. Now, it actually folds out as such. The legs are fully extendable up to several feet high. At the bottom of this tripod, it's actually got a little hook. I'll show you here at the bottom where you can actually hang your camera bag from it, which will actually give the camera a little bit of weight and stability. There's two advantages to hanging your camera bag. First of all, it'll keep your bag off the ground, keep it nice and dry. The other thing is if you're actually shooting in maybe weather that's fairly stormy, kind of windy, it'll actually give a little bit of weight and stability to the tripod itself. The legs are fully extendable to several feet. There's a little quick release button here. Perhaps that you can actually extend the legs out and as I say, it extends to quite a few feet there. So really, really simple to use. It's got a handle on the side here. Don't know if you can actually see it in the video here where you can actually hold it for carrying. The head is fully adjustable. Now, one of the problems that I don't like about these here is to adjust the tilt of the actual head. You turn this lever, but what will actually happen is if you tighten it too much, you can actually damage the head over tighten it so it'll actually render the whole tripod useless. Now, having said that, this tripod is only about 30 euros, so it's cheap and cheerful, but it will do the job there. To extend the, the column here, there's a column here as well. You loosen, there's a lock nut at the top. You can wind this here up, and it'll also give you a little bit of height as well. But you must remember when you're actually using one of these kind of tripods that you tighten this center column here. Otherwise, when you put your camera on top of the tripod, it'll just basically drop down to its normal position there as i say it's a handy little tripod cheap and cheerful um one bit of advice that i wouldn't personally do is if you're spending several hundred euros or several thousand on a dslr camera the only thing stopping your camera from crashing and smashing on the floor is the tripod underneath so i'd always recommend to go for something fairly decent fairly sturdy fairly strong tripod like this here for 30 euros 
I personally would use it for maybe holding speed lights, for doing off flash, off camera flash. I would use it maybe for holding um, different accessories, different things there. I wouldn't put my own DSLR uh, camera on this. I just think it's it's a little bit on the flimsy side. Uh, but again, for 30 euros, you can't go wrong with it there. Now, the next tripod I'm going to show you is what I would class as a decent quality tripod. By the way, I'm not actually sponsored uh, by any manufacturer. All this equipment that I'm showing you, I've actually personally bought myself at my own pocket. These are only my recommendations, what I've actually found to be useful and good over the years. This tripod here is a Manfrotto. I absolutely love Manfrotto tripods. I think the build quality of them is really, really good. They last for years and years and years. This one here is one I've got recently. It's a very, very lightweight tripod. One of the things that I actually like in this tripod is it actually has rubber handles on the sides. And what I like for this is, if you're doing any kind of landscape photography in cold weather, these rubber handles just here really, really make such a difference when you're actually shooting cold weather there. There's nothing as hateful when you're trying to take a picture moving your tripod if you haven't got gloves on and it's cold icy weather this is a real pleasure it's warm it gives you a good solid grip there the other thing i like about this tripod as well is the clips like on the other tripod are quick release but there's a different quality about them these are really really strong really really sturdy it's just a really really well built, built tripod now again if you're going into a good quality dslr camera where you spent several hundred euros or even going into a couple of thousand this is definitely the kind of the standard of tripod that i would highly recommend you to go for a couple of things on the tripod here as well now all these tripods from all different manufacturers you can buy different types of heads the head being this top mechanism here at the top this is a three axis uh, head now it's got handles here that you can actually close up they're very very compact they don't take up a whole lot of room it's a light enough tripod if you want to carry it on your back or in your rucksack as well with the rest of your camera gear you won't really notice the weight of it if you carry it for a day um, to adjust it you put up these but you can't really over tighten this one like a cheaper tripod um it'll go so far it'll stop and you know it's locked tight there there is a little mounting plate at the very very top now the mounting plates this basically screws onto the bottom of your camera. And what you'll actually do with the mounting plate is keep this on all the time, don't take it off. There's a little ring, if you like here, where you can actually put your camera strap onto this here. So I would keep this on, and then when you want to take a picture, you just very, very quickly mount it to the top of your tripod. When you're taking pictures, sometimes you might find that you're, you might be taking the picture with, with your tripod on uneven ground, it could be rocky, could be on the beach that could be a little bit of a slope and it can be fairly awkward maybe to try and get your pictures level you can always change these and post again afterwards but i'm always a great believer that when you're taking photographs try and get it as damn near perfect as you can at the time of taking the image now these tripods a lot of them have a little spirit level built into the top of them or into the side this one has a little bubble spirit level here in the top so when you've got your tripod set up and if you're on uneven ground, you can adjust the spirit level on it to make sure that your camera is nice and straight level. So really, really decent tripod. Can highly recommend this one here. Another little feature uh, also that's on this one is there's also a little hook on the side of the tripod. And this will be common in a lot of tripods, uh, especially the high end versions. And what you can actually do with that little hook is you can hang your camera bag on that now again, if you're doing, say, night photography or landscape photography or maybe a cold, wet beach out on the side of a hill or somewhere where the grounds may be fairly wet and damp, there's nothing as annoying as putting your camera bag down on the floor, finding them when you're going to pick it up to the bottom of the toe soaking wet. So you can hang your, your camera bag actually on the tripod itself on the little hook that's on the side and it'll also give a little bit of stability as well when you're taking the pictures. Now, this tripod I'm going to show you next has been the one that I've used for many, many years. At the time of this video, I've been using this for about 11 years. This is a real workhorse of a tripod. Again, it's a Manfrotto. It's a heavy, heavy tripod. So if you're going to be planning to use it all day, um, you will feel the weight of this after carrying it there. Now, 
Having said that, I like the extra weight of this tripod because again, it's more stu sturdy and rugged. If you're shooting in maybe unclement weather, like uh, a lot of wind, you'll find that your camera won't shake as much with this one here. The kind of clips on the side of this one here is they're actually not release uh, collars. These are actually kind of screw threads that you actually unscrew and then you pull the legs out like this here. So you just tighten them up again. Whereas in the other version there, it was like a quick release system. This one here, really, really bulletproof. It's been through the wars, but again, really, really amazing tripod. It's got the same type of a head as the last tripod. It's a three lever one, so it's ideal if you want to do video work, if you want to do landscape photography. You can tilt it in three different directions. There's also a little bubble spilt level at the very, very top of this. So if you've been shooting on a full day out doing landscape photography, you might be on the side of a hill, you might be on the beach, there could be dirt, there could be grime, there could be sand, there could be everything stuck to your tripod. So just to make that your tripod will last many, many more years longer, give your tripod a good clean down. A little tip that you can actually do is you can actually extend the legs, put a little bit of spray oil on the length of the leg, and I would use something like, say for example, WD-40. Give it a little spray, wipe it down with a old rag, and this will actually make your legs actually retract in and out a lot, lot easier there. Now, there are certain situations where you find a tripod just aren't suitable or practical for the job that you're on. Say, for example, if you're working maybe at an event doing videography, and there's an awful lot of people about, if you've got a tripod, the actual footprints that the legs will take up might just take up too much room. You might have people tripping over, falling over your camera equipment, and it could be a risk if anybody's going to bump into your equipment there. Another situation where I would find tripods kind of awkward to use is if you're, for example, maybe photographing a wedding, and you do love light photography where a church is very, very darkly lit, and you can't use flash, so you just have to use natural light, but yet you're still going to move about the church or that venue, um, a tripod can really, really slow you down and interrupt your way of working there. Other examples are if you're doing sports photography. Now, I would do a lot of sports photography throughout the year. If I was to try and use a tripod at the side of a sporting event, say, for example, a soccer match, it just wouldn't work out, it just wouldn't be practical. You're trying to follow the sports person. If it's a soccer ball, you're trying to follow where the action is, and a tripod would just slow you down. So what you can actually get is what's known as a monopod. It's a pole that's lightweight. Um, a lot of the modern day ones are made of carbon fiber. This is a really, really lightweight one. It's really, really strong. I'm six foot two in height, and this is roughly about six foot in height. So it's plenty big enough for most people who are gonna be using it there. A little advantage when I use one of these is if you do a lot of landscape photography and you do a lot of hill walking, you can actually use one of these as actually a walking stick as well. Now, it's got a rubber coated grip here at the top here. The legs actually just a quick release. You just screw the end, pull it out. And you can see this is actually extends to a really, really good, decent length there. Closes up really, really quickly. And it's a really, really handy way of actually uh, taking pictures similar to using a tripod, but without the hassle of using them there. I'm going to show you how this actually works when you've actually got it fitted on your, on your camera. So if you've got a heavy DSLR camera body and you've got a big long lens here, for example, like a 70 to 200 mm lens, which is really, really heavy, you'll find that actually using a camera with a strap around your neck, around your shoulder, can get really, really tiring at the end of the day there. Trust me, this camera set up here, it's a heavy, heavy setup. And if you've been shooting, say, for a full day, you'll notice it. They've been carrying this about all day there. So what you can actually do is you'll have your camera on this pole like this here. You can extend it down and it'll allow you then to hold onto the pole here, it stays. So you can actually take pictures and you can move about. You've got the flexibility of moving about and going from A to B very, very quickly. This is a really, really useful setup. Now, there has to be disadvantages, I hear you saying. There are. This isn't going to work if you're going to be doing long exposures, say for landscape photography, photographing the northern lights, doing night photography. You just won't be able to keep it steady enough. But it really comes into its own if you're doing wildlife photography, or as I say, sports photography. Or if you're a videographer, maybe at an event, and you want to do some video work as well. This is a really, really useful piece of kit. You might be asking, well, do I need a tripod or do I need a monopod? 
It really all depends on your style of shooting and what type of events you're covering there. Personally, I've used both of these. Each have their own advantages and disadvantages. I couldn't do sports photography or events without one of these monopods here. They're really, really useful. Now, here's a handy little tip that what you can actually do. You can screw off the little rubber foot at the end here and you can actually screw on do you remember the little mini tripod i showed you at the beginning for the small little metal one where you can fit it onto the end let me just show you and what this will actually do is it'll give you a lot more support if you're doing videography or doing say um, event photography somewhere so you've got the benefit of a tripod and a monopod where you can move about really really quickly there and again just gives you a little bit more uh, stability when you're using your monopod so at the beginning i told you i had an extra two bonus tips the first tip I'm going to give you now is if you haven't got a spirit level on the top of your tripod to make sure that you're going to take your picture level, download an app onto your mobile phone for a compass. And what you can actually do is switch on the compass on your phone, take your tripod, put your mobile phone on top of your tripod and use your compass to make sure that you've got your tripod nice and level. You've actually got a built-in spirit level on your tripod. That is a really, really handy way of making sure that you're going to get nice, straight, level images anywhere that you go there. The next tip that I have for you is if you're out taking photographs at night time in a very, very dark location, it's very, very easy for anybody to walk into their own camera and tripod. And it's very easy if you've got friends with you as well taking photographs, they also can walk into your tripod. So what I actually do is I go to a cheap shop where they sell things for uh, about a euro or pound, these cheap pound shops, and I buy myself a box of glow sticks like what you would have for parties so basically these are bracelets bangles that you snap them you just basically snap them like that and they glow in the dark now what i do with these is i take one of them snap it and then what i do is i actually fit it around the top of my tripod around the head here so i actually put that glow in the dark bracelet around the top of my tripod and what this will actually do is it'll glow at night time for you It'll give you just enough light so that you can see where your tripod and camera is, but it won't interfere with your pictures. So, I hope you enjoyed them tips today. Please give my channel a like and share, and give us a little subscribe to it, and I'll see you again next week.